This is the most recorded speaker in the history of modern metal, the Celestian Vintage 30. Everybody knows what it sounds like because it's literally on everything these days. It's the go-to solution. Hey, what speaker should I get for my guitar cap? Get a Celestian Vintage 30, especially if you're incapable of thinking for yourself. It's literally fucking everywhere and it's driving me insane now to make things even crazier not all vintage 30s are created equal the ones that came out in the early 2000s sound really really good and then somewhere around 2005 2006 suddenly they started sounding not so good now one of my absolute favorite metal tones ever is on ale storms captain morgan's revenge specifically the song set sail and conquer the guitar tone on that album just absolutely rips and it all comes down to my friend Lasso Lambert's angle cab which was loaded with some Celestian Vintage 30s in fact when I went to his studio last year we plugged into it I was like damn there's the sound and upon inspecting those speakers I noticed they looked a lot different than the ones I had in my angle cabinet this being one of those speakers now even though I went out and found an angle cab so I could try and emulate that kind of sound I'm getting very different results than what Lasso is getting mainly because the speakers although they are Vintage 30s are are very different. His is from the late 90s or early 2000s and my cabinet, the speakers that came in that are from roughly 2006. And something changed in the Vintage 30 between say 2004 and 2006. And these ones sound a little bit nastier. They don't have quite the nice searing top end that's in a very pleasant way. These ones are a little bit spiky and not such a good way. And I've spent hours and hours and hours endlessly trying to get the L-Storm tone and it's always failed. And once I got to Lassa's place and actually got the plug in, I was like, yeah, there is the sound. So it all comes down to the speakers loaded in your caps. So what's different? What has changed? Well, this one, even though it says Ipswich, Suffolk, England on the back, it doesn't say made there. That only says where Celestian is from. If you look at the date code sticker on the magnet, it has a little 50 over it. And according to rumor on the internet, I don't know how true this is, but that means the three words we all hate to hear, made in China. Now, how true that is, I don't know. I'd have to ask Celestian to confirm that. But one thing is absolutely sure, it doesn't sound anything like the sound that I've been after. In fact, I went out and found some older vintage 30s that I could put in that angle cabinet to try and get the sound. And it still wasn't right. Now, I've really got on Celestian's case over this over the last few months. Like, come on, guys, what the hell happened to the vintage 30? It used to be so great. Nowadays, eh, maybe not so much. And uh, I visited them last summer and they said, well, hang on a second here. We've really stepped up our production game. And uh, they sent me a brand new Vintage 30 from their plant in China. And apparently it's a massive improvement over what we've been getting lately. So tell you what, let me unbox this thing. We'll take a look at it visually and compare it to my 2006 Vintage 30. And then we're gonna throw it up in the angle cab and mic the two back to back and see what kind of differences we're getting. Here we go. So brand new Vintage 30 here right in the box. Let's uh, pull it out and see what we get and we'll do a quick visual inspection. See if we can see any kind of differences between the two. Ooh, look at that. Wow. So we've got this plastic wrapped. Interesting. Never seen that before. Any of the new speakers I get, nothing is like sealed like this. That is absolutely airtight. And I think that's a really good idea considering these are probably put onto a shipping container and sent across to the Pacific for who knows how many months. So keeping any moisture or salt water out of the speaker is probably a really good idea. Another really good idea is remember, always cut away from yourselves, kids. Ooh, that definitely smells new. Whew. And it's not pleasant. Oh, look at this. Wow. Once again, I think they seem to be taking the uh, moisture thing very seriously because I am seeing this. That's a silica gel packet. And what do we say about silica gel packets? Bass players, please don't eat them. Okay, so this one's definitely a little different. It says Celestian International Limited, nothing about the UK. And it definitely says made in China on the sticker right here. You get the date code and all that. Oh, geez. Whoa, yeah, this does look a little different. Let's look at this. What, can you guys spot the differences? One of these is not like the other. Here's the brand new one. And here's the 2006 model. What's going on? What's different here? Now I'm seeing here what I saw 
at Lassa's place, and that's a transparent voice coil cover. Now, will it sound anything like Lassa's speakers? Uh, I'm not going to get my hopes up. Um, I've got to get him to send me his serial numbers, and I'm going to see if I can find some speakers from that kind of same batch or whatnot. But just overall visual inspection here looks pretty damn similar to me, other than the voice coil cover. Could that be the key? Have they been using the wrong voice coil cover for the last uh, 10 years or something like that? Seriously though, there's not that big of a difference here other than the voice coil cap. Could that be the key? Could this be the thing that's been wrong for the last you know, 14, 16 years, something like that? And could they have finally found the solution? Now keep in mind, Celestian promised me that these speakers, the new Vintage 30s are a massive improvement over what they've had on the market over the last few years. Whether or not it's gonna be true or not remains to be seen, but I am cautiously optimistic, especially given the new voice coil cover. Hopefully it's gonna sound something similar to the earlier ones. Fingers crossed anyway. Let's drop these into an angle cab and see what we get. We'll run a little bit of guitar on them and then we'll try a full mix kind of thing, see what we can get. But we're going to do this individually. There's gonna be a lot of work to do because I want to use the different speakers in the exact same position. That way we're not gonna be influenced by a different cabinet resonances by having the speaker in a different position on a four by 12. So let me go get my drill and I'll start pulling a speaker out of the angle cab and we're gonna drop a new one in and then we're gonna put the old one in and see what happens. Now, I absolutely love this angle cap. This thing is great, but I've gone to upgrade it quite a bit because I just was not thrilled with the 2006 Vintage 30s that came with it. Here and here are actually a couple of Vintage 30s I pulled out of this 2003 Mesa cap, and they sound really good. And I've got this early 2001 uh, from Japan that I found on Reverb one day. But the big story here, of course, is this new Vintage 30 with the clear dust cap. Look at that. Just a quick recap on the miking. We've got our standard 57, and we've got this wonderful Lewitt 440 Pure Condenser. And way at the back of the room here, We've got a Jay-Z V67 about 10 feet back, just kind of flown in a little bit to add a little bit of space to the sound. I think it works really great. Sounds like crap on its own, but it definitely does the trick. All right, so now we've got the brand new Vintage 30 in the angle cab in the number one position. And let's just see what we get right from the get-go. <laughs> Okay, this is sounding promising. This has got kind of that snarl, that kind of, you know, almost an Ailstorm type sound going for it. I don't think it's quite there. It might be a little bit bright, but this is definitely in the right direction. Again, it's just got that certain that I've been after for so very long. It seems like this speaker is actually doing it. <laughs> Oh yeah, I gotta mention, we're also using the Engel Fireball 100. It just sounds phenomenal with this speaker. Really liking this tone. This is something I would have no problem putting on a client's record. I'd actually be really proud to put this on. <laughs> That is just super cool. It's just got this gnarly kind of thing I've been after for so very long. Hey, you know what? Okay, uh, yeah, awesome Hercules stand over here, by the way. Hey, Celestian, I gotta say, first impressions, you've made a massive improvement. This is much more like what it's supposed to be. I don't know what you guys did. All I can say is physically, if you look at the two speakers back to back, uh, it just seems to be you changed out the dust cap for what you used to have. Looking at Lasso Lambert speakers, they had that same kind of clear dust cap. It looks like you guys might have gone back to that design. And I say, that's a massive improvement. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, that is just all kinds of fun. Wow. Now, if you want to hear what's really going on here for combination of tones, here's the sound of the SM57 by itself. That's just glorious. Here's the Lewitt. And again, it sounds a little muffled. It's a little bit darker sounding. It's kind of filling in the gaps of that 57. It's also a lot quieter. And for real shits and giggles, I threw a room mic in just to kind of give things a little bit of space. Just for some added depth. And it's definitely not loud mixed, but it's just adding a little bit of something to the tone that I think have been lacking for a very long time. But if you combine all three mics, Crom's balls, this sounds great. <laughs> Now you guys have been hearing me rant about the Vintage 30 thing for so fucking long just because it's kind of so overdone. And that's because I'm not a fan of the stuff that came after 2004, which seems to make up the bulk of the recordings out there these days. But there might be hope now. Now the new Vintage 30s definitely sound a lot more like the old school ones from like the 90s or whatever the hell Lhasa got his from. Because that speaker sounds very different. You'll hear that kind of sound on the Frederick Nordstrom recordings as well. Like Clayman had that wonderful guitar sound and a lot of that had to do with the Vintage 30s that were coming out at that time that seem to be so hard to find these days. Celestian might have finally got it right. Well, let me drop in that, that original Vintage 30. I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about, how much the tone shifts. Yeah, we've got the original speaker back in place here. We got the 57 and the 440 Pure in place. And we're going to fire this up in just a sec and see what we get. Let's get back into the studio. All right, we're back in the control room. I, I haven't changed any of the settings on the amp. We're running everything exactly the same. Same mics, same positions, same everything. The only variable here being the speaker, and that's the original Vintage 30 in the exact same position on the cabinet. Check this out. <laughs> I'm shocked. I mean, like, it's not nearly as bad as, say, when I swapped the Jensen's out for the Neo Creambacks in that old Behringer cabinet video I did. And if you haven't seen that video, please check that one out because it shows that those old Behringer cabinets are actually hidden gold, buried treasure. Uh, once you drop some good speakers, and they sound fucking phenomenal. But there's still a pretty damn significant shift in the tone, and that's that horrible spike around five and a half kilohertz, maybe four and a half kilohertz. And it's just like an ice pick in the forehead. <laughs> You know, I used to spend hours and hours and hours reamping guitars on clients' records, trying to figure out how to make that sound good. And the easiest fucking improvement I could have done was just find a better version of the speaker, uh, preferably one with the clear dust cap cover, because that just opens the top end up in a really pleasant way. Now, of course, we're going to get a bunch of detractors saying, oh, I like the sound of the original better. And you know what? You're absolutely fine to do that thing. Personally, for me anyway, and for or what I put on actual fucking records, I'd go with the brand new ones. I think that's a pretty damn significant shift and in a very positive way. Now, I'm just speculating here, but from my eyes, my situation, it looks like Celestian went over to China and showed them how to build speakers correctly. That only took how long, guys? 14 years? Really? The 2006s really fucking suck. I mean, wow. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe I tried to make that tone work. Talk about making life difficult. All right, now for those of you guys who still might not be convinced that there's an improvement going on, let me run these two back to back in a full mix. I'll swap them out. Original speaker versus the brand new one. You tell me what you think sounds better. Here we go.
All right, that is a pretty massive shift in tones. I gotta say the new vintage 30s just slaughter the originals from 2006, not happy with those at all. Now, how this can be applied to your situation at home, if you're not happy with your guitar sound, yeah, the brand new vintage 30s might be a pretty good choice. Lessons also making some absolutely stellar stuff in terms of the EVH speakers. I'm absolutely in love with those things as well. Either one's gonna be an awesome choice for metal. Now, if you're looking on the used market, you might wanna check out the date codes that they put on. Um, I'm gonna have a link to that site as well because that's been hugely helpful in my own search. Now, this is the brand new one here and it says BH25H being the year 2022. So if you're looking for a set of these, you might wanna check the serial numbers and make sure you got something from the 2022 generation because it's definitely a massive improvement. The other thing to keep your eye out for is the much clearer dust cap. If it's opaque, don't bother because it's gonna give you that horrible spiky sound. This one's got the much more open top end that is very pleasing to the ears. Uh, Celestia, I gotta say congratulations on stepping up your game and getting your manufacturing uh, together in China because this is a gigantic fucking improvement. Nicely done, guys. Well done. Uh, I just wish you had done it in 2006 so I wouldn't have ripped my fucking hair out when I was reamping clients' records wondering why the hell I couldn't get the sound I wanted. Turns out, yeah, it's probably just all down to a dust cap. Now, a bunch of you guys have been asking me if I could do a video on how to swap out guitar speakers in a cabinet. I'll be more than happy to make it. I put it into my production cycle. So stay tuned for that. And good news is it's really not that difficult with a little bit of knowledge. So I'm going to give you guys a step-by-step -step on that. That's going to be coming up in the next couple weeks. Make sure you got your eyes peeled for that. But I also mentioned how those old Behringer cabinets are basically hidden gems. They're rock solid and they've got the angle baffle so you don't get any standing wave buildup in, the, in them. As long as you put good speakers in them, they're going to sound amazing. I'd recommend checking out this video here for how I made an old piece of shit Behringer cabinet that I picked up for a hundred bucks sound absolutely glorious. Check it out.